Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. After a brief message from one of our sponsors, we will continue with today's verse. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, believes that we're endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. GCU believes in equal opportunity, and the American dream starts with purpose. GCU equips you to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing and create a ripple effect of transformation for generations to come. By honoring your career calling, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. Change the world for good by putting others before yourself to glorify God. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, GCU's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. With 350 academic programs as of June 2024, GCU meets you where you are and provides a path to help you fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. You know your principles, priorities, and practical healthcare needs better than anyone else. That's why Christian Healthcare Ministries empowers you to personalize your healthcare. As an alternative to health insurance, you can have freedom over your healthcare decisions and doctors with affordable programs. And when you join, you're surrounded by fellow believers who share the same values. Learn more by visiting chministries.org forward slash wellness. Today's verse can be found in James chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? Where were you in the social pecking order of high school? Were you at the top? Popular and well-liked? Were you invited to parties and outings? Did other people search you out? Or were you at the bottom? Ignored? Possibly looked down upon? Maybe you were somewhere in the middle. The point is, what was the reason for your ranking? Why were you ranked where you were? See, the world around us always develops external criteria by which we judge our social standings. This criteria, then, becomes the basis by which we judge the standing of others. Whether it's athletic prowess, attractiveness, or financial means, these externals create a standard of acceptance or condemnation. Just look at Time Magazine's most influential people every year, is filled with actors and models, movers and shakers. The small-town teacher or the local church pastor, they never make the cut. Because the world favors those who fit the cultural mold of power and success, and by doing so, communicates rejection to those who fall outside of it. And that's always been the case. It was true in James's day as well. In James's time, it was the economically advantaged that rose to the top. And it is against this backdrop that James reminds us of the radical call to refuse ranking or favoritism. Instead of responding to people in favoritism drawn from such worldly external criteria, James says that we are to respond to people through faith. In fact, James says that favoritism betrays our faith. He holds before us a deep question. Do we play favorites? Now, James talks about rich and poor, but we can be divided on so many other things, can't we? Popular versus not, 
haves versus have nots, young versus old, iPhone users versus Samsung holders. The point is, if we judge some people as lovable and worthy and others as less lovable or less worthy, then we step out of the ethic of Jesus. James says that we might even end up rejecting the very work of God in our lives because favoritism betrays the faith. See, throughout Scripture, God is consistent in choosing those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith. God's most powerful acts always occur through the least likely. God liberated Israel with a previously failed leader named Moses, God chose the smallest runt of a boy named David to be king. And who would have thought that the Messiah would be born in a barn of a hovel in the shadow of Jerusalem? If we, as faithful Christian people, are really open to the work of God in our lives, then we will be radical in our acceptance of others, just as Jesus was. We will follow in his way. Jesus touched those who the world said he should not touch. He accepted the tax collector, the Gentile, the sinner. He allowed women to seat at his feet in a posture of discipleship. And when the time came to bestow his spirit, God showed no favoritism, no partiality, but accepted all who came to him in faith. You know, it can be easy to recognize this truth as it applies to us. How great it is that we are accepted and loved. But this truth, applied to us, also pushes us toward each other. Because what we see in Scripture is this. To be open to God is to be open to others. And being open to others just might place us before God. You know, of course, it's easy to give voice to our acceptance of everyone. That is, until someone whom we would choose not to associate with comes across our path. It's easy to honor the people who are like us, who agree with us, but then shun those who are seen as the opposite. But to live without favoritism, to live outside of a way where we judge people based on the world's vain criteria, demands that we choose to be more about Jesus than anything else. Favoritism betrays the faith. So what might it look like for you to reject favoritism? The truth is, we can do this in a myriad of simple ways. Perhaps you can buy a coffee for someone, someone you would have never have thought offering a coffee to. Maybe you could sit with someone new at church. Could you arrange to have lunch with someone that you like least in your church community or at your work or in your school? What would it look like to embrace even forgive, a person that you might be in conflict with. The point of all of this is simple. Living in the way of Jesus can't just be something we say. This radical way of embracing others is to be lived out. Being about Jesus has to change us on the inside and on the outside, and it has to affect how we embrace the people around us. In a recent survey, parents reported that 52% of homeschooled children need learning accommodations. These parents need practical advice, encouragement, and hope to fuel their homeschooling efforts. The Empowering Homeschool Conversations podcast is where parents gain wisdom on how to teach unique learners successfully at home, like Laura, who recently told us, I needed this episode. I don't need a fancy curriculum or need to be a special ed teacher to teach my son. You have given me hope. To listen now, go to Life Audio or search Empowering Homeschool Conversations on your favorite podcast app.